Since the Gordon Ryan vs. Felipe Pena Who's Number 1 rematch, there's been so many polarizing opinions from fans on both sides. Pena was stout. Pena showed Gordon isn't invincible. The match was boring. And then this comment I thought was pretty funny. But drama aside, I personally found this match to be really entertaining. I mean, if you somehow managed to not fall asleep on that late Sunday night, you notice that there was a lot of high level technique on display from two of the best grapplers in the world for us to witness. You may have also noticed something really strange and bizarre. That is, Gordon wasn't able to pass a guard within just two minutes. And for the Gordon super fans, trust me, Gordon would have loved to mounted Pena as soon as it went to the ground and pat on his head for the entirety of the match. But that didn't happen for the whole 45 minutes that the match lasted. And that, that stood out to me more than anything. What Pena was doing was obviously very effective to nullify Gordon's passing. And not only did he prevent himself from being passed, but Pena was able to repeatedly wrestle up and get back on his feet. To break down how Pena effectively used leg entanglements against Gordon, let's start by looking early on in the match where Pena manages to recover his guard after a close call of nearly getting his back taken and then almost being mounted. Here we see Pena use his frames to push against Gordon's hip and upper body, creating space to allow him to hip out and work in his knee shield, then go right to the butterfly hook causing Gordon to disengage. The thing is that Gordon loves to dismantle you from the knee shield eventually working his way into half guard and then mount. But Pena was able to repeatedly use the butterfly hook to keep Gordon at bay and even advance his own guard positioning. Picking up at this next sequence where Gordon re-engages, we see he attempts to high step out of Pena's guard and then lower his base, but Pena gets his butterfly hook in, using his arms to underhook and pivoting off his foot to scoot his hips under Gordon and enter single leg X then sucking his left leg in and throwing it across to lock the figure four, lastly elevating his hips to bring the leg across to enter 50-50. As Gordon frees his knee line, Pena looks to control and underhook his free leg while entering the inside bear trap. By switching to the inside bear trap, Pena can force Gordon's weight away from him. This means that Gordon won't be able to close the distance after escaping his knee line out of 50-50, and it also allows Pena to attack the other leg just as Pena does here by releasing the bear trap and transitioning through X guard to switch sides. As Gordon goes to high step his leg out, Pena lassos his leg just as you would spider lasso in the gi. By doing so, he not only affects Gordon's base, but he maintains the leg entanglement and is able to pull Gordon's leg across and back into 50-50. Felipe then threatens the back by undoing his figure four and weaving his leg through and under Gordon's backside, forcing Gordon to sit to defend. With Gordon's weight all the way back, Felipe pulls his leg out to wrestle up. Just in this first sequence, we pretty much saw the strategy Felipe would use throughout the entire match. So as we saw, it went like this. Felipe got his butterfly hook in, got under Gordon to enter X guard, transitioned to 50-50, as Gordon escaped his knee line, Felipe used the bear trap to then grab Gordon's other leg and switch back to X guard, then lassoing his leg before going back to 50-50 and threatening the back take to prompt Gordon to sit back and defend before wrestling up. As to why Felipe doesn't always try to immediately wrestle up from 50-50, well maybe he prefers one side over the other or maybe he wants to enter the bear trap to attack from there. Now that we have an understanding of exactly what Felipe's game plan from guard was, let's review his other guard sequences. Here with Gordon in a standing position, Felipe goes 2 on 1 to pull Gordon's leg in, as he throws his left leg in and right leg across to enter 50-50, then threatening the back take and kicking off Gordon to wrestle up. Looking at another example, Gordon gets the takedown landing into a leg drag position. Because of Felipe's godlike guard retention, Somehow he is able to work in his butterfly hook and get under Gordon. As Gordon attempts to high step out, Felipe lassos his leg to maintain the entanglement and then switches to 50-50. As Gordon tries to escape his trapped leg, Felipe enters the bear trap, controls Gordon's other leg, goes for the lasso as Gordon attempts to high step out and then back to 50-50. As Gordon stands to pass the 50-50, he opens the opportunity for Felipe to attack the back forcing him to sit and allowing Felipe to wrestle up. While Felipe was successful with his game plan from bottom, as the match went on, we did see Gordon pick up the pace and not allow Pena to work so easily. Here we see Gordon applying more pressure, weighing more heavily on Felipe's butterfly hook, 
and trying to close the distance. After backing out, Gordon does a little bit of throw by type passing, back to pressure passing. Felipe's 50-50 entry attempts were also being shut down more often. When Felipe would try to shoot under, Gordon would lower his base and block Felipe's head. And when Felipe would try the 2 on 1 50-50 entry, Gordon would knee slide across or high step out to defend. It was at the 43 minute mark we saw for the first time where Gordon was able to escape the 50-50 entirely without any follow up leg entanglement transitions by Pena. And just under 2 minutes later, Pena would verbally submit. Although Pena quit at the end, we saw how his leg entanglement strategy proved to be effective for nearly 45 minutes. Going into this rematch with Gordon, many of us had counted him out and assumed Gordon to be this invincible train that would run through Pena just as he had done to many others. But Pena proved me and a lot of people wrong. Even through the loss of one of his close friends in Leandro Lowe, he stood to the challenge and for that he has my utmost respect. There's a good chance that the two might meet again in the plus 99 kilogram bracket at the 2022 ADCC championships going down in about 3 weeks from now. And that'll be really interesting since the rule set has a time limit. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you got some value from it. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And also follow me at DeepDiveJJ on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Take care.